topic of this video is solving nonlinear systems of equations by using substitution or elimination. Let's look at a problem. The difference of two numbers is 2, and the sum of their squares is 10. Find the numbers. Okay, so this problem has been given to us in words, which means we're responsible for creating the algebraic system ourselves. The first step in doing that is to define our variables. The sentence says the difference of two numbers is 2. Find the numbers. So we know we're looking for two numbers. Let's call them x and y. Now, the difference of those numbers is 2. Difference is a word that means subtract. So that gives me the equation x minus y is 2, or equals 2. The next part of the sentence says the sum of their squares is 10. Now let's think about that. The sum of their squares. Who are they? Well, that would be x and y. So their squares must mean x squared and y squared. And then because it says the sum of their squares, that must mean that we add those things together. So x squared plus y squared. And it says is 10, so I'll write equals 10. OK, great. So now we've defined our system. We can now solve it using substitution or elimination. Which one shall we choose? Well, let's go through the three steps to decide. Step one, clear fractions. We don't have any. Step two, look for any x or y terms with a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. If we can find any, then we will use substitution. If not, we would move on to step three, which is to use elimination. OK, so when we say x or y, we really mean it x or y. Not x squared, not y cubed, not x times y, just an x or a y, which we see here and here. This x has a coefficient of positive 1. This y has a coefficient of negative 1. So we can solve for either one of these. But I can tell you that it's easier to solve for the positive one. So let's label our equations and solve for the x. This is equation 1. This is equation 2. And we'll solve for x in equation 1. The way we'll do that is by adding y to both sides. We move the y to the other side where it changes signs. And we get x equals 2 plus y. This is still equation 1. We just made it look different. Now we're going to substitute that into equation 2. x squared plus y squared equals 10. And everywhere we see an x in equation 2, we're going to put 2 plus y instead. Now remember, whenever you replace something with something new in algebra, if the thing you are replacing has an exponent or a multiplying neighbor or is being subtracted, then parentheses are required. x has an exponent, so I need parentheses. 2 plus y must be in parentheses. So I get 2 plus y in parentheses squared plus y squared equals 10. An exponent tells me how many times to multiply a base by itself. So 2 plus y in parentheses squared would be rewritten as 2 plus y times another 2 plus y. And I will use the FOIL multiplication method to get rid of those parentheses. So I get 4 plus 2y plus 2y, plus y squared, then plus this y squared, equals 10. It's very easy to make a mistake here by thinking, once you've written plus y squared, that you've already written this one. You have not. This one comes from the FOIL. This one comes from the term directly above it. So be careful. Now put your terms in descending order and combine like terms. Plus y squared plus y squared is 2y squared. It is not y to the fourth. y squared times y squared is y to the fourth. y squared plus y squared is equal to 2y squared. So be very careful. Similarly, 2y plus 2y makes plus 4y. And then we have plus 4 and equals 10. This is a quadratic equation in one variable, and we have several options for solving it. But the best option, very frequently, is factoring. So let's see if we can get equal 0 and try a factoring technique. If we want equal 0, we need to get rid of this 10. And we do that by subtracting 10 on both sides. So then we will have 2y squared plus 4y minus 6 equals 0. OK, let's begin the factoring process. First step, descending order. Check. Second step, GCF. Well, these are all divisible by 2. Let's take out the 2. So that would leave us with 2 
parenthesis, y squared plus 2y minus 3 equals 0. Third step, count the terms and use an appropriate method based on the number of terms you have. Well, we have three terms in the parentheses, so we're going to use a method that works for trinomials. And because this is a simple trinomial, the first term in the parentheses has a coefficient of 1, this will actually be a pretty easy trinomial defector because we just have to come up with two numbers that multiply to make negative 3, but add to make positive 2. So those would be 3 and negative 1. And to factor, we just put a y in front of each one and then put them in parentheses. And there we go. We've done our factoring. We can always check factoring with FOIL. y squared minus 1y plus 3y would make plus 2y minus 3. All right, next, zero product property. 2 equals 0. y plus 3 equals 0. y minus 1 equals 0. This has no solution because 2 equals 0 is false. It's a contradiction. Subtracting 3 on both sides gives me y equals negative 3. Adding 1 on both sides gives me y equals 1. Now, this is not the end of the problem. This is a system of equations. We're looking for ordered pairs, x's and y's. Right now, all we have is two y's. So now we have to find the x's that go with those y's. And we do that by plugging y into any equation anywhere in our solution that still contains x and y in it. Well, if we think about it, we know y. What we do not know is x. And earlier in our uh, solution, we wrote that x was equal to 2 plus y. So let's use that equation to find what x is. Let's plug in each one of these values of y one at a time to find the x that goes with it. So let's start with the negative 3. If y equals negative 3, then x equals 2 plus negative 3, which equals negative 1. So that tells me that this question mark has to be a negative 1. If y equals 1, then x equals 2 plus 1, which equals 3. So that tells me the x goes with the other y value. And these are our two potential solutions to this problem, negative 1, negative 3, and 3, comma 1. But we have to check both points in both of the original equations that we wrote, and we will do that in our next video.